Darnell in your afternoon drive here on Fox Sports Radio, live from Nautical Bowls, Bishop's Corner in West Hartford. And uh, Mike is about 10 feet away from us right now. Have a seat, Mike. uh, Take a load off, man. You're working too hard. You're working way too hard. I think the one thing, Mike, we want to straighten Ben out on is why why the beach theme and and why is it so kind of uh, low-key here? Well, the the founders would tell you that the nautical theme came – kind of in a vision when they were were kind of planning their next courses of action after they decided to start this franchise. Uh, it was started in Minnetonka, Minnesota, which you know. And if you were in one of the stores in Minnesota, it would be the mural that you see on the wall would be a lakefront mural. It's a land of a thousand lakes. Right, right. But when um, coastal states started buying into it, they created the coastal ocean scene okay. that, that, that we have, given that we're an ocean state. I got it. So I'm trying to check out all the specialty bowls. Before we get into that, though, we got to get into your background because Spain just went up 2-1. We got to let our people know that. Oh. Right? Spain went up 2-1. I saw the 1-1. One, one. Yeah. I didn't know 2-1. Yeah, one. no, they just got their second goal. <laughs> you are a soccer guy, sir. Uh, yeah. I used to coach soccer over there at Trinity. Did you guys get into UEFA Copa America World Cup like as a soccer team, like watch these things as you're playing your season? Is that, yeah. Or is it like out of sight, out of mind? This isn't really a thing for a college soccer player. No, th- I mean, there were certainly a, a group of the players at that time that were soccer junkies and, and they had their favorite EPL teams and, and we talked about national teams and whatnot. But all these big events that are going on now, Copa America, the Euro, World Cup, Olympics, all that, all that kind of stuff, always happened outside of the academic year. Right. So we, we couldn't really get into kind of that stuff, but we did try to go and support the local teams. We'd go to the UConn games. Uh, when it didn't interfere with our schedule, we'd go to the University of Hartford games. We went to the athletic games. So, you know, we did we did some stuff. And Mike's my age. I mean, soccer growing up here in Connecticut was way bigger than football in the 70s. I mean, that that's, you know, again, it, you know, you being a youngster, that's when pro soccer was actually bigger in this country. It's really hard like, to believe. It's hard <laughs> to believe. Pele, Pele came here and played, and there were so many foreign-born players that came over here. And uh, I saw again, his first game. Yeah, I, I grew up playing soccer more than football because our football team was terrible. Our soccer team was all wrestlers, basketball players, baseball players. You, you had such a great combination of athletes. And so around here, I lived in Avon. I've lived in West Simsbury, but West Hartford and here, th- this, is like, this is like the Fairfield County. This, this and Fairfield County are two of the best soccer hubs in the state. And these kids go around the country and play soccer, and they, and they are fantastic. So, um, you know, half the people that have come in here in the last two hours that I've been here are wearing soccer jerseys. Those kids That's are true. all soccer yeah. players that you came through here. They're not wearing football. They're not wearing Giants or Jets. They're wearing, like, European soccer club stuff. So the question is, what the hell happened? Team USA men's soccer is terrible. We're not even out of the group stages. Dibs is yelling at everybody that we can. We talked about you a week ago. It's like maybe my mind. Mike will We've know. Never been good at Why aren't we good on the men's side in soccer? I, I think we are good, but we're we're constantly playing catch up. I mean, we're way better today than we were ten years ago. But uh, it seems like we're still behind. We're 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 still behind. Our, our level of sophistication from an individual player's standpoint is different. You know, it's not the same. We're hardworking, and, and it gets us down the road, but it only gets us so far. Well, no, and, and, and the thing that, like, baseball has caught up in these foreign countries, we're over 35% now is Latin American in the major leagues. And, you know, European soccer, they have clubs. They have academies. These kids are doing what the Latinos are doing in baseball. They do in soccer. And that's why I, I just think we need that in this country, yet – not a, not a lot of, they, they do travel soccer, and I have a really good friend that, that travels to Italy every year with a bunch of soccer clubs and stuff like that, and they compete over there, but they're still, you know, we just don't have, like, the concentration on the sport of soccer. It's like fourth or fifth um, on the list for the parents in this country. Part of it is our, our youth sports structure is big business. And it's talking to them. You're talking to them. I do travel baseball. (laughs) It's not the same in Europe, you know, so they can they can have those talent days and extract the top talent and try to develop them. Um, And then some move on and some get released. Some go to other clubs. But in the States, 
it's big business. But I like what you're talking about, the structure. Over there, they have junior leagues. It's like hockey in yeah. Canada. You have junior leagues, and you can work your way up to a higher level, a higher level, a higher level. I kind of We talk about this all the time where some of the – European soccer clubs, if you win and you're like at the lower, and I kind of like this. We want to do this in basketball. Yeah, you move um, up. The, you move up. You move up the ladder into a better league mm-hmm. if you play better. and Or move down. If yeah, you, or move down if yeah. you don't play well. Right. So, I mean, that's I mean that one of the stories today is because of watching Cooper flag yesterday, a lot of teams are already thinking about tanking the 2025 oh, basketball stop. season. Can you ma- so in other stop. countries, you can't do that. Right. Here, you know, in the NBA next year, you might see teams not wanting to win. Right. You right. can win Hartford Athletic tickets here for a big game on Friday, taking it on the Charleston Battery, going to kick their butt. We also got Yankees tickets. We got Yargos tickets. We got tickets to Six Flags. Bunch of stuff going on at Nautical Bulls, but really it's all about the Bulls, my man. We have seen several athletes come in here, like Dib said. We have seen just – a lot of moms bringing kids in here. It's a hot yep. day. Uh, plus, I thought Dibs' cousin came in with all those tattoos. Like, who was that dude? That dude was a, a heavy hitter. Was he just, like, <laughs> right off of the construction site No, or he's a U.S. Postal uh, guy. He just got off work. It That's feels right. like you know a lot of your customers already. You haven't been here that long. Uh, tell us about just, like, the history of this spot, like, when you guys – Here. When you decided to make the move for this franchise. Um – well, we looked at a lot of different locations before settling on on this location, which we're thrilled to be here. A um, lot of lot of traffic. It's a it's a very busy retail center. Um, but you know, we we looked in 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 the center. We looked in Avon. We looked in Glastonbury, um, and this just seemed to be the right fit for us. And while I never have lived in West Hartford, I've spent so much time in West Hartford with youth sports that it, I almost felt like I was part of the community. Um, and, and so our, we benefit from, from that. We have folks from the colleges, from the high schools, from the travel programs coming in. Um, and there's just a natural connection. Uh, talk about your stuff, though. I mean, organic, all natural. I'll let you, you know, talk about this stuff. But my, my wife and my daughter, who are very athletic, my daughter's in lacrosse, uh, plays tennis. They they go to nautical bowls and they get stuff like that. So talk about this. You know, people people that want to be energized. They want to eat the right way. I mean, God, she's right now at 13. She's going three days a week to conditioning and four days a week to play lacrosse. Even tonight, she she already did conditioning today and she's going to lacrosse. And she probably is eating something like this. You know, in between that. Yeah, I what I love the most about our bowls is that you can use it as a pre or a post workout. Um, if you use it as a, a pre, it's, it's giving you those energy resources without making you feel heavy. Um, so it's not that you would want to eat one and then 45 minutes later go out and exert yourself. But it's, uh, if you eat at the appropriate time before you're exerting, it's, it's a great, great meal. Same thing on the flip side. Because it's not so heavy, it's a great post-workout. So we, we have both. We have folks that come in before their workout, be it athletic teams or at one of the local gyms, um, and they come in afterwards. Uh, Sometimes they're doing the smoothies and adding the protein to it. Um, Sometimes they're doing the protein bowls uh, that we have here that just gives them that little extra boost. There's so many people like what you're thinking, have workout in mind, have health in mind, but a lot of people are just thinking, man, this stuff tastes great. And it's a treat, and it's <laughs> healthier for yeah. you than a big pound of ice cream. Right. So, like, that's the way to do it. We've seen so many people, like I said, bring their kids in here that I just feel like it is a healthier option for the kids to get started on instead of sitting in front of a huge bowl of ice cream. Yeah, and, and ice cream has its place, right? But um, if you are more conscious about what you're putting in, into your body on a daily basis, this, this is a good a good resource for sure. I am, and I need to know about some of your ingredients. Before I get into the stuff I don't know anything about, tell me about the stuff maybe I do and where you get your ingredients from because you were telling us, like, this stuff is all natural. These are super foods. These aren't, you know, on just some factory line somewhere. Acai. 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 Where do we get our acai from? Because I heard that's a special uh, thing. Our right acai there. actually comes from Brazil. Acai is a, is a Brazilian berry. Um, we are currently making, um, we're taking steps to, to try and produce some of, of these things in the state. Awesome. But currently, it comes from Brazil. Um, 
And we have a vendor that, that supplies it for us. Um, our Pattaya is from the States. Pattaya, P-I-T-A-Y-A. That's the pink stuff is what I That's call it. That's the fancy word for dragon fruit. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I no, I've seen that in the yes. supermarket. All yes. right. What about Blue Magic? What Blue, is Blue Magic, Magic? Is, is unique to us. It's a combination of pineapple, coconut, and blue spirulina, which is a blue-green algae, a tasteless blue-green algae. Um, that is blue, and it's how we get that blue hue to to the to the base. And you can taste anything. Like you can build your own bowl here, and if you don't know what pitaya tastes like, you can literally get a scoop of yeah. it from one yeah. of your employees. Absolutely. And yeah. But part of our job is is kind of educating our guests that that come in for the first time and they don't know what it is, and we we want to do our part in in helping them. Find the things that they like the best. That's a great and I'm, idea. I'm a smoothie guy as well as the bowl guy. Yeah. Talk about some of these great, because I'm about to try your pink palm. Pink palm is very popular. Yep. It's uh, primarily, the, the base is, is the pitaya yep. with strawberries and bananas and, and almond milk. Um, we put almond milk in all our smoothies. Uh, some folks have come in and, and they're not big fans of almond milk and they would prefer water. So you can make that one with water and not really disrupt the taste too much. Right. Um, same with the uh, immune boost um, smoothie. Um, but some of the others, to keep its authentic taste, which they're all delicious, you know, I, I would suggest keeping the almond milk. In well, there. I love some of these. That, all right, <laughs> describe the anchors away and then the coffee cruise because I'm a big coffee well, person. Those are my well, and so is my partner. Yeah, those yeah, are yeah. my two favorite. And my, my wife, who does not like coffee at all, the coffee cruise is her favorite. Wow! All right, it's, it's the simplest. It's it's um, it's just it's almond milk. It's it's a scoop of coffee powder, um, and it's almond milk. Oh, I already said that. Cacao and, and coconut. Cacao and coconut. Yeah, um, and. And I'm ready to great, run through a wall for you. Great coffee <laughs> taste. <laughs> you get those are some of my favorite ingredients right there. Uh, yeah. No. So there's a top secret bowl coming soon. What is the Weeha Bowl? Can we let that out over the sure. airwaves? Is okay. that, did he pronounce Excellent. it right? Sure. Weeha, the Weeha oh. Bowl, which, Weeha. Is, which is West Hartford. West Hartford. And uh, we, we're just using the, the school colors of Hall High School, which is will be Blue Magic. Okay. And Connard, which will be the Pattaya. Oh, there you go. And then uh, the Coconut White, which is kind of the neutral color. So it'll be the Weeha Bowl to support both of those those uh, schools awesome and uh, you do catering uh, for everything catering and events uh, we're we're at uh, all the home games for the Hartford Athletic saw you out there yeah we um, what's up with the soccer community and you guys I mean besides you being a coach it's like that <laughs> I think I'm connection? naturally drawn in that direction <laughs> is that the uh, connection? <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like this is the soccer hangout right here uh, like, we've seen so many soccer people I last time I saw you was at Hartford Athletic yeah and and then I mean, on any given day, so I still coach in, in one of the local clubs, and any given day we've got a fair amount of m my players in here as well. There as, you go. As, as well as some of the other uh, club members. What is, like, the soccer summer diet? What do, I, like, what do you tell your players as far as a training regimen? Come eat at Nautical Bowl. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually great stuff right here. I mean, it, it, is, it is part of the diet yep. for sure, and it's obviously days like this it's – Tremendous it's essential to hydration. Hydrate, right? Yeah, so you gotta, you know, just and and maybe when they go out to do their training. If I'm working with them in the morning, we have small groups that will train in the morning, which it's early before it gets too hot, and they're just constant water breaks and and then something really good for you to to help you in that recovery process right afterwards. And this is this is great, but there are other other great things too. Mike, love you, man. Thank you so much for having us here again and uh, appreciate you what you do for, for the coming. community. Thank you. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll do first dibs question of the day next on the Rob Dibble Show with Ben Darnell on your afternoon drive on Fox Sports Radio. We're live.